We got shirts on sale. Express your evolution and starter Pokemon love by buying an evolution family shirt in which one starter shirt? Link will be in the description below. Pokemon has a ton of iconic characters. The mascot Pikachu, the original legendary Pokemon Mewtwo, the we need to sell this Pokemon Charizard, and the Pokemon that left kids all over the world trying to move a truck, Mew. But when it comes down to non-Pokemon characters, I think the most famous is probably Ash. And why wouldn't he be? He's been the protagonist of the anime series for two decades now. That being said, despite him being so involved in the franchise, he is definitely not the most popular character for most people. In fact, a big percent of the Pokemon community actually really dislike, but I really don't think it's all too justified. So today, we're going to be taking a look at why people hate or even dislike Ash, and why I think he's actually a pretty great character. So the main reasons people have for disliking Ash are not aging, not winning an Elite Four challenge, not being red, and not being a good trainer. So with all that being said, let's dive right into it. Firstly, and probably the most superficial reason that people give is that he doesn't age. We've all heard the meme, Ash Ketchum has been 10 for 20 years, he's a vampire. The list goes on. In fact, there is an old episode of the anime where they talk about hitting the one year mark of his journey, which started on his birthday. So what gives? Well, Pokemon's targeted at kids, right? So keeping the protagonist young is a great way to keep young kids interested. Honestly, while this is the least impactful of all the reasons, it is also the hardest to justify. That is, unless you follow the story of Ash's adventures all being stories a mom is reading to her daughter. Think of those old Betty Drew books. Her age just really isn't a factor, so she never ages. I don't think this is true, but it's always been one of my favorites. Anyways, onto the real reasons. Ash doesn't evolve as Pokemon. How many times has Ash made it to the Elite Four with a Squirtle, a Snivy, or a Gibble? Why would anyone not evolve their Pokemon? Well, this Pokemon series is largely about accepting and making friends. The reason he doesn't evolve Pikachu is because Pikachu doesn't want to evolve. Ash likes his Pokemon just as they are. If they evolve, that's great, but if they don't, who cares? If they are so happy, so is he. And people always seem to make it sound like Ash never evolved this Pokemon, ignoring Charizard, Gudra, and dozens of others. On top of that, the people who are complaining about Ash not optimizing his teams are usually the same ones asking people to do nuzlocks or solo challenges. Who knows, maybe Ash is just playing his game on hard mode. Speaking of hard mode, that leads us to the next one. Ash never wins a league. While he has definitely been improving over time, even coming in second in Kalos, he still hasn't won. That comes down to a lot of things. In the Pokemon world, Ash genuinely isn't the strongest or smartest trainer. The whole idea of the show is a boy setting out on a journey to meet and the train Pokemon to be the best trainer he possibly can. It's about him improving and growing, and as long as he doesn't win a league, it shows there is still room for him to grow and become even better. It gives him a reason to move on to a new region and keep growing. Yeah, I would have loved to see him winning Kalos, but I'm not surprised really. Second place is better than he he's ever done though. It's still following the path of progression and that's not a bad thing. Finally, I think if people were honest with themselves, they'd find out why they honestly hate Ash. He isn't Red. It's true that Ash is the anime counterpart, but he isn't meant to play the same role. Red in the games was meant to be a player experience, not a long running adventure series spanning the decades. Just one quick journey across one region and then you'd be done. Red being played by the players is meant to be able to stop Team Rocket and conquer the Pokemon League. Fairly easy too. And the Pokemon Adventures manga is meant to be a telling of that story. The Pokemon anime on the other hand is about Ash, just a random kid. He isn't being controlled by the all-knowing players, he isn't meant to be a champion, he is meant to travel learn and grow, and that's what he does. It's like comparing Spider-Man to Superman. Both are fine, but Spider-Man just isn't supposed to be undefeatable. They have different themes and motifs while still sharing the same goal of saving the day. And people seem to equate not winning Pokemon leagues to being a bad trainer, saying things like, oh, he never even beat gym leaders as well. But I think a lot of people who have been saying this just haven't seen the modern Pokemon anime. While the early series could feel very still at times, everything in the current age has been pretty phenomenal. The X and Y anime was stunning. The boost in animation quality is something this series really needed. The Pokemon anime has always been something different from the games. It isn't a turn-based experience like we are used to, it's this dynamic thing with way more moving parts. Pokemon can react to the environment around them, burrowing underground, melting rocks, swinging from trees. They can react to the moves of their opponents in dodge or counterattack or even combine their attacks. All of which Ash is great at. Some of my favorite battles in this series comes from Diamond and Pearl, X and Y, and the Sun and Moon anime. In Diamond and Pearl, Ash had a rival named Paul who bent into Chimchar because he was too weak. Ash takes the Chimchar in and begins to train him. During their fight in the Sinnoh, League, Ash breaks apart and burns the ground to remove toxic spikes. He uses the Inferno that Paul threw away to show his ideology of caring for Pokemon is better than the brute force method Paul has. And Paul even uses Ash's counter shell technique, showing that both trainers are still constantly improving and learning from each other. It really was a great battle. I know a lot of people knock the Univ region for being the most stale region the Pokemon anime has ever introduced us with, but we were talking about Paul, so this is a perfect time for me to compare Paul and Trip, Ash's main Univ arrival. Trip and Paul 
both disliked Ash a lot. They thought he was a moron and put him down at any time they ever saw him. But you know what's funny? Ash proved them wrong. Ash turned that battle around with Paul and won his respect by using the same exact Pokemon he had lost against in the first time around. With Trip, regardless of his Pikachu losing to a level 5 Snivy, he still won and gained his respect in the Unival League. Yeah, sure, Paul was a little pissy when he lost, but he still has a lot of respect for Ash, regardless because he proved that he could win. Ash has a way of earning his respect from people, even if people belittle him and put him down constantly. Ash has this way of earning respect that's a great sense of character development. Then in X and Y, we see things get even more ramped up. I know a lot of people had problems with X and Y because Ash left this powerful Pokemon behind again, Pikachu reset again, he released Greninja and Gudra, but overall the series was great, and his fight against the lawn was on a whole other level. It was huge. These insane attacks flying everywhere in the final round of the Kalos League, all this stress and tension, people sure thought Ash was going to win this league. It was great, and I think it's safe to say that this was Ash's strongest team ever up until this point. The battle comes to a peak when Alon's Mega Charizard battles Ash's Linked Greninja. The only words for it are explosive and amazing. It's probably my favorite fight in the entire series, and at no point during it did I think, wow, Ash sucks. I was too busy thinking about how amazing he was and how far he had come. To even further Ash's experience in Kalos, he met a lot of new friends along the way. We re-met the X and Y rivals, and they seem a lot less still due to Ash meeting them and bringing out their characters fully. Let's be real. Ash has that impact on people, and I can say he also had that same experience on Serena as well. Serena had a lot of personality before meeting Ash, sure, but Ash cheered her on in her contests, and she formed great bonds with her Pokemon because of him. To be blunt, he was pretty much the source of all her confidence. Ash and Serena had a lot of really great character development in this series, and I have to say I think they helped each other out a lot more than anything. And I already know what people are going to say. Why doesn't Ash with Get the Girls Ease with blah blah blah? It's because Pokemon is targeted for kids. This isn't an anime soap opera. Even with the anime being targeted with kids though, Serena still did kiss Ash, and to me that made me feel that Ash has a special impact on people that a lot of characters in anime and other series don't have. Like I mentioned earlier, it's about learning and growing, and Ash definitely learned a lot from his Kalos journey. We get to see him grow up while staying the same age, as weird as that sounds. Finally, we have the Sun and Moon series, and before people complain, yes, the art style is different, it is lighter, it is more goofy, and the lines are less rigid. But you know what that allows for? Cheaper and more impressive animation. Because of that, you get to see Ash in a whole new light. Once Ash catches his stride in this series, he never really feels like a bad trainer again. He is in control, he knows what he is doing, and he makes great use of Z-moves and strategy. He is in no means the same bad trainer he was in the original series. Believe it or not, he has grown quite a bit in the last 20 years. And with what I mentioned earlier, Ash has the ability to gain respect from people who put him down, he has the ability to change other characters drastically, and his sense of battling has improved a lot. He has changed a lot in the past 20 years, for better I should say. In the X and Y section, I also brought up the idea of people being upset about his resets. Yes, Ash resets his abilities at the start of each journey. He doesn't keep his insanely powerful Pokemon from the previous region, and instead he decides to only keep his Pikachu each time. And even then, it seems like Pikachu drops down to being a low level Pokemon, albeit with a high level moveset. And I never really understood people being upset by this. Like, why would you want him to keep them each time? Imagine if Ash showed up on the shores with an Infernape, Gudra, Pikachu, Greninja, Gliscor, and Sceptile, and then he comes up to Hala and he sends out a Makuhita. Do you know how boring that would be? I know how much people complain about Ash never winning, but I think if he never lost, I think they might complain even more. All this hate on Ash is really unneeded. He isn't supposed to be unbeatable. He isn't supposed to know everything or be perfect. He is just supposed to travel and learn, and he nails that. You can keep saying he's trash or that red is better or whatever else you really want, but at the end of the day, Ash's battles are fun to watch inventive and resourceful. People hold them to an unrealistic standard for what the series is. And honestly, that is just a shame. Because if they took an hour to watch the show and put their negativity on the back burner for even just a little bit, I think they'd really come to appreciate Ash a lot more and probably enjoy themselves while they watch. But hey, that's just my opinion on it all. But I'm really curious as to what you guys think. Ash has been a big part of my life and I'm sure a ton of yours for a very long time. So do you guys like Ash or dislike him and why? And why do you think other people might disagree? I hope we could have a good discussion about it in the comments down below. Or if you have ideas for other characters that you think are misunderstood, overrated, or underrated, I could definitely take a look at them in the future. So be sure to let me know your comments down below as well. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe to my channel with notifications on, that way you never miss an upload. If you want to support me further, consider following my Twitch stream a lot of Pokemon content and Nintendo content like Shiny Hunting, Showdown Battles, Explorers of Sky, Zelda, Fire Emblem, Smash Brothers, Borderlands, you name it, I play it. Want to support me further, further in Gankle Perks? Check out my Patreon. Dan Leone, Lady Crimson, Pal491, The Lazy Leo, Matthew Young, Awesome Lego, Jarrett Weezosted, and Sodden Grider did, and I want to thank them personally for going above and beyond. It means the world to me. I think I'm gonna wrap this up though. I'm Mr. Gumbrian, and I will see you in the future for more awesome Pokemon content.